How to Treat and Cure Primary Central Nervous System Lymphoma A primary central nervous system lymphoma, PCNSL, also known as microglioma and primary brain lymphoma, is a primary intracranial tumor appearing mostly in patients with severe immunosuppression, typically patients with AIDS. PCNSLs represent around 20% of all cases of lymphomas in HIV infections. Other types are Burkitt's lymphomas and immunoblastic lymphomas. Primary CNS lymphoma is highly associated with Epstein-Barr virus, EBV, infection in immunodeficient patients, such as those with AIDS and those iatrogenically immunosuppressed, and does not have a predilection for any particular age group. In immunocompromised patients, prognosis is usually poor. In immunocompetent patients, that is, patients who do not have AIDS or some other immunodeficiency, there is rarely an association with EBV infection or other DNA viruses. In the immunocompetent population, PCNSLs typically appear in older patients in their 50s and 60s. Importantly, the incidence of PCNSL in the immunocompetent population has been reported to have increased more than tenfold from 2.5 cases to 30 cases per 10 million population. Signs and Symptoms A primary CNS lymphoma usually presents with seizure, headache, cranial nerve findings, altered mental status, or other focal neurological deficits typical of a mass effect. Systemic symptoms may include fever night sweats, or weight loss. Other symptoms include diplopia, dysphagia, vertigo, monocular vision loss, progressive dementia or stupor in patients with a non-focal neurologic exam and minimal abnormalities on MRI, more common in AIDS patients, facial hypoesthesia, diagnosis. Micrograph showing a primary CNS lymphoma with the characteristic paravascular distribution composed of large cells with prominent nucleoli. Brain biopsy. HPS stain. The definitive diagnosis is arrived at from tissue, that is a biopsy, by a pathologist. MRI or contrast enhanced CT classically shows multiple ring enhancing lesions in the deep white matter. The major differential diagnosis, based on imaging, is cerebral toxoplasmosis, which is also prevalent in AIDS patients and also presents with a ring-enhanced lesion. Although toxoplasmosis generally presents with more lesions and the contrast enhancement is typically more pronounced, imaging techniques cannot distinguish the two conditions with certainty, and cannot exclude other diagnoses. Thus, patients undergo a brain biopsy. Treatment. Surgical resection is usually ineffective because of the depth of the tumor. Treatment with irradiation and corticosteroids often only produces a partial response and tumor recurs in more than 90% of patients. Median survival is 10 to 18 months in immunocompetent patients, and less in those with AIDS. The addition of 4-methotrexate and folinic acid Leucoverin, may extend survival to a median of 3.5 years. If radiation is added to methotrexate, median survival time may increase beyond 4 years. However, radiation is not recommended in conjunction with methotrexate because of an increased risk of leukoencephalopathy and dementia in patients older than 60. In AIDS patients, Perhaps the most important factor with respect to treatment is the use of highly active antiretroviral therapy, HART, which affects the CD4 plus lymphocyte population and the level of immunosuppression. The optimal treatment plan for patients with PCNSL has not been determined. Combination chemotherapy and radiotherapy at least doubles survival time but causes dementia and leukoencephalopathy in at least 50% of patients who undergo it. The most studied chemotherapeutic agent in PCNSL is methotrexate, a folate analog that interferes with DNA repair. Methotrexate therapy in patients with PCNSL typically requires hospitalization for close monitoring and intravenous fluids. Leucoverin is often given for the duration of the therapy. 
standard chemotherapeutic regimens for lymphoma such as CHOP are ineffective in PCNSL, probably due to poor penetration of the agents through the blood-brain barrier. Newer treatments, such as high-dose chemotherapy combined with stem cell transplant are proving to increase survival by years. Prognosis In immunocompetent patients The initial response to radiotherapy is often excellent, and may result in a complete remission. However, the duration of response with radiotherapy alone remains short, with median survival after treatment with radiotherapy just 18 months. Methotrexate-based chemotherapy markedly improves survival, with some studies showing median survival after methotrexate chemotherapy reaching 48 months. In AIDS patients Patients with AIDS and PCNSL have a median survival of only 4 months with radiotherapy alone. Untreated, median survival is only 2.5 months, sometimes due to concurrent opportunistic infections rather than the lymphoma itself. Extended survival has been seen, however, in a subgroup of AIDS patients with CD4 counts of more than 200 and no concurrent. Opportunistic infections who can tolerate aggressive therapy consisting of either methotrexate monotherapy or vincristine, procarbazine, or whole brain radiotherapy. These patients have a median survival of 10 to 18 months. Of course, highly active antiretroviral therapy, heart, is critical for prolonged survival in any AIDS patient. So compliance with heart may play a role in survival in patients with concurrent AIDS and PCNSL. Diagnostic Considerations Since the clinical and neuroimaging presentation of PCNSL can be varied and the differential diagnostic possibilities are therefore large. No patient should be treated for PCNSL without definitive cytologic proof of diagnosis, either by vitrectomy, positive CSF cytology, or brain biopsy. Patients with Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome AIDS, may have coexisting infections. Any change in neurologic examination findings or neuroimaging studies should be accordingly investigated broadly for the possibility of a diagnosis besides PCNSL. The predilection of PCNSL for certain cerebral sites gives rise to its characteristic appearance on neuroimaging studies. 75% of immunocompetent patients with these tumors have solitary lesions. The dense cellularity of the tumor accounts for its isodence or hyperdense appearance on non-enhanced CT scan and high point dense appearance on long TR weighted MRI. Following administration of either iodinated contrast for CT or gadolinium for MRI, almost all PCNSLs enhance homogeneously. PCNSLs are assumed to be diffusely infiltrative at the time of presentation. The areas of disease are not visible on neuroimaging studies because they are behind a relatively intact blood-brain barrier.